primarily over my uh, research career, I've been interested in corporate governance. And that looks at the top of organisations. We're talking about the boards of directors. We're talking about e executives, chief executives primarily. More recently, I've been focusing on executive salaries. And recently, in the last couple of years, there have been some major changes in the legislation about the disclosure of executive pay and the shareholder say on executive pay. Now, the last couple of years, 2011, 2012, have been interesting because what we're going to find is that shareholders have more of a say now on executive salaries. Um, this is going to result in possibly changes to board structures, board memberships. Um, so this is, this is something that could be quite interesting to examine towards the end of this year when we have the annual general meeting season coming up. Key outcome of this research is that uh, we're looking into the efficacy of uh, regulation into executive pay, particularly in relation to the impact that it has on the shaping of executive salaries and how uh, shareholders use their right now, their new right, to vote on executive salaries. They can vote against an executive pay packet at an annual general meeting, therefore um, uh, triggering possibly a board spill um, after two no votes, so-called no votes. This could have implications uh, in a number of areas. Number one, it could change the uh, board membership. Okay, so we'll have different directors on boards. And that potentially creates the possibility of women um, having more opportunity to, to sit on boards. Only about 8% of board seats are occupied by women now. And that's a slight increase over the last 10 years. It's, um, but it's not a great figure, as you can imagine. Um, the other implication is that shareholders now have a greater say, therefore, or companies, boards in particular, are probably more likely to engage them earlier and more often in order to explain what they're doing, in order to demystify processes, in order to uh, justify what they've been doing. What um, we are interested in our research, I work as part of a team, is looking at the role that remuneration consultants play. These are the professionals who come in and advise board members on how they should be rewarding their executives. Do these consultants play a role in legitimising uh, exorbitant salaries or, more benignly, uh, provide expert advice on how to best uh, reward a well-performing or a high-performing executive? The impact on a society and community is yet to be determined, given that it's a very new law that we're looking at. Um, which had its first kind of go round at the end of last year, 2011, and will have another um, go round this year at 2012. What will happen at the end of this year, potentially, is that companies would have received a second vote. Some companies would have received a second vote against executive pay. Some 35 major Australian companies received a vote against executive salaries last year. So I imagine um, a number of them will probably be, um, be, uh, be very careful in how they set up their executive rewards this year in order to avoid a second no vote. Um, if there is a second vote against executive salaries, then that could potentially trigger, as I said before, a change in board membership and perhaps create some opportunities for um, new directors to come on to boards who didn't have the opportunity before. Um, also, I think it, it has broader social implications because Australians, by um, their nature, are very much into owning shares. Uh, about half of the adult population, roughly half, um, between 40 and 50 per cent, depending on which data you look at, about half of adult Australians own shares, directly or indirectly. And so they have a, an interest in what's happening in companies.